What's happening, folks? Kevin here from Sportsbox. Breaks.com coming at you live Monday, March 14th, 2022. Breaking 2022 Tops Heritage Baseball. Choose team. Case break number six. Who has who in this break? Arizona Diamondbacks going to Sean K. The Braves going to Josh G. Orioles for Allen B. The Red Sox, Christopher J. The Cubbies for George P. White Sox, Mike T. The Reds, Henry T. Guardians going to Travis S. The Rockies, Matthew G. Uh, Tigers going to Tony K, the Astros Greg Z, the Royals Greg Z. Angels going to Henry T. The Dodgers were double sold right near the end of this one getting filled up. Uh, both Allen and I believe Jim picked it up at the same time. Allen's order was just a split second, a microsecond faster. So Allen will be the holder of the Dodgers. Uh, Jim, I hit you back credit on that one. At the time of doing it, the Dodgers were still available in the last of these breaks, break seven. So if you want to roll that credit right into the Dodgers spot in the next one, that would be fantastic. Uh, we got the Marlins going to Tony K. We got the Brewers going to Christopher J. Twins, Brian B. Mets, Armando M. Yankees, David S. Uh, Oakland A is going to Dean E. The Phillies, Brandon S. Pittsburgh Pirates, Nelson O. Uh, San Diego Padres going to Mike T. The Giants going to Sean K. Uh, Mariners going to Greg Z. The Cardinals going to Sean K. Tampa Bay Rays, Allen B. Uh, Texas Rangers, Greg Z. Got the Toronto Blue Jays going to Rob R. And the Washington Nationals going to Earl S. All right, here we go, guys. Sixth case of the product. Greg, what's happening, buddy? I see your message. Be home to watch in 15. Sounds good, brother. All right, here we go. Let's do another full case. About 90 minutes-ish, give or take, if I'm fast, if I'm slow. Usually I'm slow. All right. Here we go. Bringing back the... Oh, jeez. We lost it. We lost it. Regained it. They slid out of there. Did not want to be uh, playing nice. All right. Let's try this move. One, two. Three, four. Five, six. Two. Four. And six. And let's make a nice little wall of heritage. There they are. Okay, that works. Here we go. Let's start it up. We have oversized card box topper of Cody Bellinger to start us off. So there is that Dodger spot already. Double sold getting a box topper. And again, the Dodgers in this one does belong to Allen. <coughs> okay. Every card ships, fellas. So if I pass something off and you want to see it, just understand you will, you will be getting it. One of one. Let's shoot for the moon, Greg. Let's do it. One of one. Hand-numbered auto or something, right? We pulled a nice red ink hand-numbered auto yesterday. We pulled a nice red ink hand-numbered relic as well. Guys, a lot of cards. <coughs> Kathy's already started on the sorting process for the uh, first couple that went off just to get a jump on them. But it is a lot of cards that are going to be going out the door from both PA and Vegas this week. So bear with us. Our usual ship times are probably going to be a tad bit longer. <coughs> are we going to do both of these tonight, guys? That would be like, that's ideal. That was when I was thinking about how the week is going to shake out. I was thinking, okay, two of them on Sunday, two of them on Monday. That'll get all of them broken and out the door. So we are down to uh, single-digit spots on break seven. That's the last of them. That would be perfect if we can get that one filled up all the way. Broken tonight. Two cases, bang, bang, and we are out of heritage at that point.
Big price reduction done on Series 1 Baseball too, guys, which is also, I mean, literally a brand new to market product. That product is like a week on the market. So check it out. If you want to keep going on 2022 Baseball, Series 1 is where it's at. In addition to the uh, last of these Heritage. All right, here we go. So the hit has fallen on the left side most of the time. So we might be seeing the hit here right off the rip, but that's all right. Let's just go on the left side to start with. Focus. Looks pretty good. All right, here we go. Feels like Groundhog Day a little bit. So any of these kind of cards where it's like uh, multi-team, uh, this triple team particular layout is going to go to the uh, Blue Jays on the top because the uh, top team is the Blue Jays. Uh, the dual ones that just have a left-right situation, it goes to the team on the left. They would have to be numbered 50 or lower or have ink on them in order for us to uh, run them through the randomizer to determine who gets it. <clears throat> and here it is. It is, in fact, another Clubhouse collection. Nice one. Bryce Harper for the Phils. Philadelphia Phils going to Brandon. Brandon, you out there tonight, my friend? I know you're typically hanging out over on the Facebook side. Bryce Harper, Phil's Clubhouse Collection Relic to start the party. There's a Luis Gill rookie. Sleeve up, Luis. Uh, I mention it every time, but any of the 1973 flashback cards, those are not hits either. So the way we'll work those is as we're doing the uh, sorting, we'll just kind of randomly, you know, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and just pepper them down on a... Uh, a random team, so you might see some of those pop up in your stack when you get your shipment. There's no rhyme or reason to it. If they were a uh, low number or had some kind of relic or auto on them, then we would randomize them accordingly across the 30 teams. <clears throat> the eeny, meeny, miny, mo method. Official science around here. There's a Wander, our first appearance of Wander. Wander rookie. Cha-ching. All right, one side of one box. Complete thus far. <coughs> here comes the second side. So we did see our hit. So what else are we going to see in addition to the hit? Looks like we're down to eight spots now in the Heritage Baseball. Fantastic. Guys, if we could roll right into the next one without having to uh, play the game of let's get it filled, that will be great. Don't mind if you do. Not you, Trav. I sound, the way that I'm breathing and the way that I just keep coughing, it sounds like I've been taking hits, but uh, sadly, I have not. <clears throat> There's little Jaron Duran, New Age Performers. <clears throat> all right guys that's going to do it box number one where are we at with that nine minutes so i'm actually running a little behind pace usually eight minutes is the pace nine minutes on that one but that's all right we'll pick it up a tad bit All right, what's our topper? Here we go. How about the Bryce Harper again? Pinup style. Pinup of Harper for the Phils. So the Phils got the Bryce Harper relic. Now getting a Bryce Harper pinup topper. Empty box.
All right, chugging along, guys. Let's go on the right stack this time to start with. <clears throat> and oh, I didn't even realize we got our hot box in front of us here. Purple hot box, here we come. All right. Didn't even realize it. How about Bryce Harper, the man of the hour here? Third appearance of Bryce, this time on a purple chrome. How about it? Well, there he is, Mr. Motorcycle, Tatis, purple chrome. Vladdy Jr., Purple Chrome. Matt Chapman, A's, Purple Chrome. <coughs> uh, next up, Griffin Jacks for the Twins with some Purple Chrome. Shohei, Purple Chrome for the Angels. The Japanese Babe Ruth, if you will. Jose Ramirez, Guardians, Purple Chrome. Devers, Red Sox, Purple Chrome. Ozzy Albies, Braves, Purple Chrome. How about a Joe Ryan for the Twins, Purple Chrome. George Springer, Blue Jays, Purple Chrome. There's a little Francisco Lindor. Very nice. Francisco Lindor for the Mets with the Purple Chrome. And that does it for that stack. We're still due our hit. It's going to fall on the other side. Let's check it out. We're do something monstrous, right? We are do something monstrous. We've been pulling pretty good stuff, but how about an Aaron Judge Purple Chrome? Very nice for the Yankees. That is uh, David S. David picking up those Yankee spots at the last minute here tonight. Miggy. Detroit Tigers going to Tony. Purple Chrome. Jose Barrios. Toronto. Purple Chrome. Mike Yastrzemski. Giants Chrome. Purple. Uh, Stanton, purple chrome for the Yanks. Brian De La Cruz, Marlins, purple chrome. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Here is a uh, regular chrome, <coughs> white border, Joe Ryan for the Twins. Minnesota Twins going to Brian B., that is going to be $9.99, buddy. Jared Walsh, Angels, Purple Chrome. <clears throat> and here we go on the hit. I see it. I see it. Here it comes. How about an Andrew McCutcheon? Clubhouse collection relic for them Phils. Philadelphia Phils doing all right. Brandon gets it again. Got the Bryce Harper, now a McCutcheon. Coming your way. Trey Mancini, Purple Chrome behind it. And an Eloy. Purple Chrome for the White Sox. Mookie, Dodgers, Purple Chrome. And just a tad bit left here. Byron Buxton, Twins, Purple Chrome. And last but not least is Akenta Maeda, also Twins, Purple Chrome. 
And that does it for box number two. So our chrome hot box has been unearthed. <clears throat> so with this weirdo cough that I have, hold on one sec, guys. I'm going to put my phone on silent. It's like dinging off on me over here a little bit. With this uh, weirdo cough that I have, it's also resulting in some like ear pressure, which I feel like I'm like on a plane and I have to keep like popping my ears. One sec here, fellas, just trying to get this phone into silent. <clears throat> all right, sorry about that, guys. Phone was like wailing away. It's just all the camera notifications. Kathy's going in and out of the house. All right, here we go. How about some old school killer brew action? Old school Killebrew in pinup form. Still sitting at eight spots and break number seven. Braves and the Sox reduced, fellas. <clears throat> Jay just posting in the chat there. Braves and the Sox were reduced in the uh, team lineup in break seven. voice sounds like absolute shit just when I think I'm like shaking it it's back again in full force all right here goes <coughs> all right something coming up here is it a variation it is indeed how about a Pete Alonzo image variation image variation of Alonzo there we go. Pretty cool card right there. Mets on the board for Armando. Nice one, Armando. There's a Jaron Duran and a Luis Gill and a Wander. How about that? Back to back to back, uh, you know, decent rookies. Well, Wander, of course, not a little bit more than that, but good stuff. Duran, Gill, and Wander within like a five card shot of each other. Hmm. 
All right, here comes some chrome. How about a Cabrian Hayes chrome? Nice. Pittsburgh. That is number to 673. All right, one side is down. We're still due our hit. Come on, real one auto. Let's see some ink. There's a Wander, New Age Performers. And it is not a real one auto, but it is a nice bat relic of Matt Olson, Clubhouse Collection bat relic for the A's. Oakland A's going to Dean. There you go, Dean. Bat relic, Oakland. Chugging along, fellas. Chugging along. And here comes something. What do we got? We got... What do we got? It's flipped that way. I'm looking to see it. it's French back. It is not French back. It is not an image or a color variation. What am I looking at here, fellas? Whit Merrifield it is, and it is KC Royals. So I'm going to put that down for just a minute. All right, that does it for that box. Let me shuffle these off to the side here, and we'll start up a new. So was that Merrifield just flipped to be flipped, or is that actually some kind of variation that's not indicated? Could have been flipped just to be flipped. I'll show it to you one more time. This is what the front. This is the back. I don't know. All right, let's keep going. Hmm. Jay, I think you had at least one card in yours, if I'm not mistaken, that was flipped purely for no reason. It was just flipped to be flipped, right? How about a Dodgers team card? A little 1973 Dodgers 50th anniversary Dodgers team records. Doesn't look like anything, Tony, also. Yep. Maybe just flipped for uh, no reason, right? All right, I'm going to put it in the base stack. So the owner of the KC spot is, that is you, Greg. So when you see that Merrifield come in your base stack, and that's why. Where are we at? Six on the next Heritage. Guys, it feels pretty good that that one is going to go tonight. Six spots left on the next Heritage. All right, there's one. Special edition backward printed SSP. How is that marketplace? They were promoting pretty heavily during the National last year. 
a lot of guys were saying that, uh, oh, yeah, we break exclusively on whatnot. And I'm like, my understanding, to be able to be a live breaker on there, you have to be vetted and, like, all kinds of stuff, which we would definitely qualify for being in the business as long as we are. But, you know, our crowd knows us through our YouTube channel pretty much. So it's like, okay, start up on a whole new platform. Maybe, maybe there's enough traffic there to start getting some breaks going. But, um crazy stuff over there in terms of just the overall marketplace sales yeah they advertised the heck out of the national in july all right here we go here we go they're trying to be like stock x but uh a little different a little more maybe focus on the sports and collectible side of it Instead of like sneakers and whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> you can never find comps on there. If you look to see like what a box of cards sold for, it's very difficult to find comps. Which tells me either A, they're not, you know, putting their data out there for you to scrape, or B, they're, uh, you know, just not selling that many like full boxes or cases and stuff like that. It's not their forte, so that's why the data is not there. Brandon, nothing. The Whit Merrifield is nothing. Yeah, it's still here, T. I go to the, <laughs> I go to a doctor's appointment tomorrow. So hopefully, hopefully they're going to be able to give me something good to kill this weird cough. I don't know. I'm not feeling too optimistic about it, but we shall, uh, we shall try. <clears throat> Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate the uh, the look up, buddy. I woke up at six in the morning and a coughing spree. I couldn't even, uh, I couldn't barely breathe for like 20 minutes. I like sit upright, drink some stuff, take some blasts off the inhaler. Still didn't do much. There's Tatis. All right, that does it for that side. <coughs> Here we go on the next one. We're going to find, I don't know, let's say, let's, let's just call our shot and say we're going to find a real one auto in this stack. <laughs> don't die, Kevin. I'm trying not to. My fear is I'm going to, like, they're going to be like, okay, let's send you in for a chest x-ray. And then they're going to be like, oh, shit, you're loaded up with tumors. Not to sound uh, completely doom and gloom, but that's the way my mind works. And my shot was incorrect. We pulled a clubhouse collection. At least it's a bat relic. Two in a row bat relics. Javier Baez for the Tigers going off to Tony. Tony Baez bat relic clubhouse collection. All right, last little bit here from this one. This is box number one, two, three, four, box four. Francisco. Brinson and Hoskins, last two. All right, that'll do it for that one. I know. You Google or WebMD, like, any kind of ailment you have, you find, like, the worst-case scenario, and your mind makes you believe you've got the worst-case scenario, right? <sighs> what a mind F. <laughs> Results will come back. Death with the side of diarrhea. Well, you know what? I don't want to get too in-depth, but uh, they're not too far off. All right, Steven Strasburg is our oversized box topper for the Nationals. Nationals going to Earl in this one. <clears throat> you know what they do say is good for a cough? A venti iced coffee from Starbucks. 
there we go. All right, empty box. The taco, I wish it was the Taco Bell diet, diet, then I could die happy. It's the carnivore diet. Carnivore diet for like the past two weeks, which basically, <laughs> if you guys have ever done carnivore, you know that your uh, gastrointestinal issues are pretty strong when you're on carnivore, not to be uh, too graphic here. All right, one side. Jay, any local casino activity lately? Any Mount Airy or uh, Mohegan since I was in town in late January? For the brief five minutes, we got to hang out at Mohegan before I uh, caught the 19. That's what I feel like it might be. So I came down, I tested positive for COVID at the end of January, fully vaccinated, even have the booster. It was really light. It was like sniffles and just like a light sore throat for a couple days. And within like four or five days, I was already testing negative for it with the home kits and didn't feel any effects of it at all. Fast forward like a week, I wanna say like February 10th or something like that, um, I started getting this tickle in my chest and that's when this cough started forming. So I don't know, is it a, an after effect of the COVID where I didn't even really have anything when I had active COVID? Very well, very well might be. <clears throat> yep. I know how to ruin a good vacation. I know how to ruin a good vacation, that's for sure. Post-COVID going on for three months, Jay. Like, this is like a cough that I've never had before in my life. Like, the fact that I cannot shake it, and it doesn't even feel like it's an active cough. It's like an inflammation in the lungs that just, it's a tickle that turns into like a coughing spree. All right, here we go. How about a Vladdy Jr. image variation? All right, very cool. Very, that's awesome. That's awesome. Toronto Blue Jays going to Rob R. Very cool. What's he got in his back pocket? I mean, I'm sure it's a ball, but it looks uh, looks a little weird, if you know what I'm saying. Vladdy Jr. Nice hit. Nice hit. There's a Jaron Duran with a New Age Performers. All right, last little bit out of the right stack. Bryce Harper, Red Auto. Come on, let's do it, buddy. Let's do it. You pulled a box topper and a relic to start off, right? So a little bit of Harper appearances thus far. All right, that'll do it for that side. All right, here we go on the other side. Break on through. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll even show them to you real quick because they're just sitting right over to the side here. You pulled a Bryce Harper pin-up topper. And the very first hit that came out was a Bryce Harper Clubhouse Collection Relic. All 
All right, nothing yet. Are we going to see? Oh, we're going to see ink, guys. There it is. There it is. All right. All right, I'm looking to see who's got him. Greg, you're still watching out there, buddy. How about a Jordan? How about an Alvarez? Real one auto coming your way, sir. Congrats. Nice hit. Jordan Alvarez. Houston Astros going off to Greg Z. Oh, and the purple chrome Harper. Yes, yes, I forgot about that. Alvarez auto. Nice one, bud. Congrats, Greg. Nice hit. I'm even going to sleeve him up right now, even though they're not chrome face or any of that, just for the sake of a little extra protection. Nice Alvarez, buddy. You are welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. There's a Jaron Duran rookie. Joe likes it. Joe likes it. There's a Wander. Nice box here. All right, a little bit left. <clears throat> Couple days, this silly cough thing hit me to the point where it like saps all my energy and I'm like, I feel like I'm unable to move like pretty much the whole day. I feel like an 80 year old guy here. I mean, I'm not too far off, just 30 years away, but <clears throat> the struggle is real. All right, getting into base bucket number two. <clears throat> and we're finishing off the sixth box here, which is officially going to put us at the uh, halfway mark. What do we got? Box topper of Luis Robert, pinup style. There we go. White Sox going to Mike T. <laughs> the weed and booze breakfast. I wish I can lay claim to that, but that is not what it is. Where are we at? Four to go in Heritage. All right, guys, let's work that number down to zero. We're going to bang right through the next one, too. I'll probably just need like five to ten minutes in between. Get a drink. Take a breath. Upload the videos. Twenty-one spots left. It looks like in series one. Now I think that maybe moved down a spot. that a weed and booze breakfast would probably uh, negate those symptoms right Miami in series one awesome 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 Joe thank you guys series one no slouch as we know that stuff is fantastic really solid this year too Jay's got that one over in PA, so if it does fill, we would be making the switcheroo over to Pennsylvania to do it. Full case of jumbo. All right, there's that. <coughs> I know everybody's looking for 2022 baseball. We got it. More weed and weed for breakfast kind of guy. <clears throat> I feel like if a bunch of our breaking crew got together in the same room, we would all get along really well. The few guys that I have met, T included, over the weekend, 
the few guys I have met, it's been pretty cool. Everybody's been of like mindset. And twenty four seven. All right, nothing yet here, guys. Well, I mean, the offer is out there. I think Jason and I are definitely going to be doing the national this year. So, end of July, first week of August in Atlantic City. So, come one, come all. Let's uh, let's have a gathering, guys. If we were able to get like you know. 10 guys from SBB together, we might even consider like renting a private room or something like that and having a little get together. Like at a restaurant or something like that. That'd be fantastic. I know we'll have a few of us there. <clears throat> Tommy definitely going to be there. Jeremy's going to be there. So there's two I know for sure are going to be there. Jay will do it like uh, poker at large circa 2007. <laughs> at large poker circa 2007. So like when poker and online poker specifically was still really in its heyday, 2007, 2008, poker stars used to do these. Uh, there were these like poker groups from like Usenet news groups back in the day called like at large, like Atlantic something... It's like a poker group of all the guys on the uh, Upper East Coast would get together and poker stars would dump some money into like a party, like a catered party and stuff and uh, get together some poker tournaments with a bunch of the people that were involved in these in these communities. And it was fun. How about a Freddie Freeman uh, mini? Nice. Freddie Freeman Braves mini going off to Josh. That is a 10 of 100. But uh, we went to it the one year. It was rather ridiculous, other than the fact that, you know, they paid for some food for uh, the crew and stuff like that. But but it reminds me a little bit about, like, what I'm talking about here, especially being in Atlantic City. What they have, they had a, uh, a dinner that was considered a smoking dinner at, like, a really old-school restaurant, like the Fork and Cork or something like that in uh, Atlantic City. All right, Mike Trout Clubhouse Collection Relic, Bat Relic for the Angels. That goes to Henry. There you go, buddy. Nice Trout. Bat Relic Clubhouse Collection. Henry gets it. <clears throat> I see black. Black border. How about a black border of uh, Candelario? For the Tigers, black border. Tigers, once again, going off to Tony. So not numbered on the card, but those black borders, my understanding is they are numbered to 50, right? So black border. How about a uh, white border chrome here of Kyle Hendricks for the Cubbies going to George P. Chrome to 999. There's a Luis Gill, a rookie. Okay, that's going to do it. We are halfway through the case, guys, which is what, 44 minutes? So, yeah, we're at that 90-minute 90, uh, 90 minute pace. <clears throat> do it at a golf casino resort in Wichita, Kansas with uh, 10 buddies, 36 holes, stay two nights in a hotel casino for 200 a person. That's pretty good, man. I mean, hell, that's real good. 36 holes of golf alone is... Couple hundred bucks, right? <coughs> <coughs> I don't really play golf, but I'm aware that it's uh, it's not cheap. How about them Yankees with the Garrett Cole? Garrett Cole, oversized topper. All right, there's an empty. So how about, have you guys, like, if you guys have been out to Vegas, have you ever been to, and I know these exist in other parts of the country, too. They're a chain. Uh, the Top Golfs. 
So the one in Vegas is ridiculous. It's like multi-tier. It's like, you know, you have to reserve a space. <clears throat> um, I can only imagine, like, my cousin uh, got married last year, and they came out, and a bunch of he and his boys wanted to do the uh, the Top Golf experience. I'm sure between, like, the eight of them or whatever, they popped off, like, a couple Gs, for sure. Just basically for, like, a fancy driving range overlooking uh, the Vegas Strip. My understanding is that's where Henry Ruggs was the night that he got all jacked up and uh, went out and did his damage. He was at Top Golf. <clears throat> yeah, they're all like that, right? All the Top Golfs, basically just a huge money grab. Kind of like uh, golfing meets like a club experience or like an ultra lounge or something like that. 20-year reunion is at Top Golf. I mean, as a reunion, they probably get a deal, and they probably aren't going to gouge you too bad, but... Walking in... How about this? I walk in, I go to meet my cousin that very night that he was there, I get in the elevator, I go to get in the elevator, just the elevator floor is absolutely covered in vomit. Here's a, like, 20-something-year-old girl and her boyfriend standing there, and she's just, like, letting it go. And I'm like, all right, I'll take the other side. So, I knew what I was getting into right off the rip on that one. 60 a person with food included. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. You can't do much for that these days. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. Starting on that old right-hand stack. We got a backwards card. What is it? What is it? How about a Mookie Betts image variation? Image variation of Mookie. And that's pretty cool. Dodgers. That's that Dodgers spot which double sold. Allen owns it in this one. Get an image variation of Mookie. You can barely get two drinks in Vegas for 60 bucks these days, Joe. You go to some places on the strip, you walk up to the bar. Like, we got two frozen margaritas, Kathy and I did. I want to say, like, a, a year and a half ago. Maybe it was even before COVID hit. Might have even been before COVID hit. <coughs> we got two frozen margaritas at the uh, PBR bar, PBR rock bar, in front of the Planet Hollywood. I think it was 48 bucks. 48 bucks for two frozen margaritas. I nearly shit myself. Like, I know they're expensive, right? But, like, that's like, what? Edison in the old uh, Ford plant. Is that right, Tommy? Yeah, pretty cool. All right, nothing yet. Yeah, man, good time to uh, quit it, that's for sure. I just, you know, I get my gamble on, so when I'm sitting down getting my gamble on, I get free drinks. But if I have to walk up to a bar in Vegas and actually order and pay for drinks, that's why when T was in town, we were downtown, I said, oh, the best deal in town is walking into these ABC stores. You walk into the little stores on Fremont, you can get, like, a big, like, 20 ounce like can of IPA beer like good stuff for like three bucks you're not going to get that at the casino bars <sighs> casino bars like a bottle of Miller Lite 11 bucks <clears throat> 40s at the bodegas and walk the strip that's the way to go Joe that is the way to go if you're not going to get your gamble on and you want to pay for the booze, that's the way to go. Or buy it in bulk at like, you know, whatever. Keep it keep it chilled. Here's a Duran rookie. <coughs> All right, what do we do here, guys? We're do something. And it is going to be a clubhouse collection relic of Joey Votto. 
Joey Votto, Clubhouse Collection Relic for the Reds. That's Henry. Henry gets another one. Clubhouse Collection, buddy. Yeah, the uh, the cheap drunk is a thing of the past in Vegas. I remember, like, even on the Strip, man, you'd be able to walk up to a bar and get, like, a couple dollars. There's one place. There's there, Well, two places on the Strip that have cheap drinks. One, the Casino Royale. $3 bottles. Most domestics and everything, $3 bottles. And, uh... The stage door, which is on the around the corner from the Cromwell, real sketch place, one dollar bottles, one dollar beers. You might need a concealed carry license to walk in there to feel secure, but one dollar beers nonetheless. Luis Gill, Randy Rosarina. All right, that'll do it. That will do it. So back in the day, I want to say, Jay, what year? 2008, 2009? So like Bally's in, Las, or Bally's in Atlantic City used to have like some drink specials. Jay, Jay, Jay had a run in with some Red Stag shots one night. <laughs> that is super cheap for Vegas. But they even had deals. Like they had $1 shots at... Uh, at these bars in Atlantic City back in the day. You won't see that anymore. Roberto Clemente, Pittsburgh Pirates, is the oversized topper. Two left. A run in with some red stag. <laughs> yeah, the stage door is right across from Bally's. So, like, in between Bally's and the next property is Flamingo. So, it's a road with the walk bridge. It's on the Crom. It's basically right behind Cromwell. That's the stage door. And right beyond that is, um, there's like a classic Vegas restaurant called Batista's Hole in the Wall. It's an Italian restaurant in that little back alley back there. When you eat at that Batista's Hole in the Wall, it's unlimited wine. Unlimited house wine. They just keep coming around with like jugs of red and white. And asking you like, oh, would you like another wine? And they'll just keep pouring house wine in your glass, unlimited. Yeah, $1 Red Stag shots back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not good wine. It's probably, like, full of sugar and, like, just kind of trash wine, but... basically prune juice that's been fermented. I don't even know why it just reminded me, like when I was growing up, we hung around with a bunch of unsavory characters and a couple of guys had done some time in the local county jail and they would talk about like, <laughs> they would make their own like pruno, like prison wine out of like Donald Duck orange juice in the clink. I kid you not. They would basically like get Donald Duck orange juice cans, put extra sugar in it, whatever, and like turn it into some kind of hooch. Oh, Tommy, I love the Atlantic, uh, the Irish pub in Atlantic City. One of my favorites. I follow them on Facebook, so every once in a while I'll see stuff pop up on their Facebook. Makes me, uh, makes me wish I was there. I remember the one time myself, Jason, and this guy, John Neary, went to, uh, went to the Irish pub in Atlantic City, and Jason's like, I don't really drink much, and the next thing I know, each of us get a pint of beer, and J like John Neary and I are like one sip in, Jason is one sip remaining, he's like, this is why I don't drink much, <laughs> like ch chugging, chugging the pints. Hogs and heifers, stop playing. <laughs> Hogs and heifers, that's a good area down there. That's pretty cool down in the uh, the downtown. There's a cool little steakhouse right there called uh, Triple George. Yeah, hooch. Talking about the hooch. 
Donald Duck orange juice hooch. You know, you know your life is off track when you're gulping down Donald Ju Donald Duck orange juice hooch. That night he was. That night he was. He doesn't really drink anymore. He'll tell you. But Jay, what'd you say? You had one drink or one shot for the twenty-first birthday. Nothing yet here. Looking for something. There's Luis. Yeah, that section down there is a fun place to gamble too. We we go down to uh, we go down to uh, the downtown Grand and the Golden Gate and all those casinos, those little dinky casinos down there. Those are kind of our regular joints we go. You can still get a three to two blackjack game in those joints. All the blackjack uh, games in the strip now are six five blackjack, which is ridiculous. The average like cons like whatever tourist customer doesn't really care because they don't even see how much they're being ripped off. But when you do the math on the six five payouts versus the three two, if you're playing blackjack, I don't even play blackjack, but it's just like the way Vegas has become. Yeah, it's all 6.5 on the strip now. All right, we got some chrome coming up. Got a TJ uh, Friedel for the Reds. That is a chrome uh, gray border numbering to 373. <coughs> and here we go. How about a Moncada? White Sox. Going off to Mike. Clubhouse Collection Relic. So, so far we've pulled one auto. We've already done our uh, hot box. We've pulled one auto. We got four boxes left. So out of those four boxes, to kind of keep on par with the usual uh, status quo of like three autos per box, we should see two more autos. Maybe there's no guarantee, but we might see two more autos out of those four. <clears throat> Donald, Donald Duck orange juice. I don't even know if that stuff is sold anymore. I just remember from back in the day. And then, you know, dudes that uh, did some time in, <laughs> in the county clink would talk about using it as their base for their, uh, <laughs> for their hooch. I can only imagine this was like the 80s and early 90s. Like, that's probably morphed into, uh, who knows, like, hooch is like... Like Kool-Aid now compared to whatever the heck else they're doing in there. All right, that'll do it for that one. We got four boxes left, guys. Four to go. Oh, the dollar store. It's at the dollar store. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Dollar store. <clears throat> All right, here we go. One more. What do we got? We got a 1973 card of Dalton Jones for the Rangers. Texas Rangers going off to Greg Z. There we go, Greg. 50th anniversary. 1973 Texas Rangers. Mad Dog. Oh, Mad Dog. Boone's Farm. Made with apples. <clears throat> Strawberry Hill, is that another one like Boone's Farm? Don't know if I'm familiar with that one, but sounds like it would be in that bracket. <laughs> that doesn't taste like, or is Strawberry Hill the Mad Dog flavor? Banana Strawberry Mad Dog. Now that one I remember. So here's a good story for you. We're seniors in high school. 
And like the you know, I grew up in an era where we would throw keggers in the woods literally like a couple times a week, right? That was just like our fun. And we would have dudes that were like 20, 25, like 21, 25 years old. So like we were like 17, 18 at the time. Not even 18, probably 16, 17. And these guys would get us kegs. Like you had a sign for a keg at these beer distributors in Pennsylvania. So like they were really putting themselves out there, like putting themselves on the line, signing for a keg of beer for like 30 young kids. But this was a different era. This was a different era. And so like additionally, if you wanted to get like super hard liquor, like uh, like grain alcohol, 190 proof grain alcohol, you had a sign for that stuff too. We're going on a field trip. We're seniors in high school. We're going on a field trip to Hershey Park. And there's a bunch of us. It's all buses going down there. The whole senior class is going. And my friend Chris Pahosky, kid from uh, Dixon City. Um, do you guys remember the little bottles? They were little mini bottles. They were glass. And it was uh, like a soft drink called New York Seltzer. So New York Seltzer was basically like clear soda pop in different flavors. Like grape and raspberry and like whatever. But they were all clear. What does this crazy son of a bitch do but empties out a New York seltzer bottle and fills it with 190 proof Everclear and brings it on the bus to Hershey Park that year and then introduces it to like everybody and everybody starts taking little nips off it. Now they're taking nips of 190 proof uh, grain. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, man, that was uh, quite the trip. Quite the trip. Green alcohol being drank by a bunch of like 17 year old kids on a bus to Hershey Park. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. New York Seltzer. Back in the 80s. Ambats and Wilkesbury. I've put a phone booth. <clears throat> it tasted. Yes, it's like the Jones Soda. Yep. They're, they're good. I think they even tried to do a comeback on the uh, New York Seltzer in recent years, but I don't know that it actually took hold. Like a retro comeback kind of thing. Yeah, New York Seltzer. It was came in glass bottles, too, which a lot of sodas did back then. Glass bottles with that styrofoam wrap on it that would, like, slide off. Uh, trip down memory lane. Back when uh, quarter pounders from uh, McDonald's were bloody as all hell and they came in styrofoam containers. They were delicious, too, let me tell you. Way different than the microwave nonsense we get now. <coughs> I see a red chrome at the bottom here. Yeah, back in the day when I was, like, a young, young kid, like, 70s, early 80s, like, most of the sandwiches at McDonald's came in a styrofoam clamshell-style container that opened up. And they were, like, really cooked on the griddle, like, right from uh, fresh. So, like, now they kind of, like, I don't know, do, like, a half microwave, half whatever. But, like, you would get a quarter pounder. And how about a Reese Hoskins? There you go, buddy. I know you were looking for some Phillies love. There you go, Brandon. Reese Hoskins coming your way. Red Chrome. That is a 573 on that one. 207 of 573. But you would open up that container and, like, the, uh, the quarter pounders weren't really, like, you know, cooked well. They were cooked maybe medium at most. So they would still be, like, a little bit bloody. And they were amazing. <clears throat> I'm sure pictures are to be had if you search the internet for it. All right, here we go on the second side. They did. They tasted like actual beef, not just, like, uh, microwaved, like, whatever they do now. I remember I was telling Kathy about this and she had no idea. She's 14 years younger than me, so she had she had no idea. I said, "Yeah, I remember like when McDonald's used to do birthday parties, like you would get a group birthday party." And she's like, "No, I don't think that was a thing when I was a kid." I'm like, "Oh yeah." Like birthday parties, and how about more Phillies action here? McCutcheon, Philadelphia Phils. One more for Brandon. There you go, buddy. Andrew McCutcheon, Clubhouse Collection Relic. But like, yeah, the birthday parties at McDonald's, they were kind of legendary. 
I think they stopped those maybe in the 80s, probably. How about a Wander rookie? Yes, T, the parties, the parties. They were fun, man. I had one. Not too proud to admit. Yeah, Philly's doing great. Philly's coming in strong here. You're like, why is this guy talking about McDonald's and Bloody Burgers and Everclear? I just came here to see cards. <laughs> Vladdy, <laughs> Vladdy Jr. is upside down. And that is... All right, guys. How about an error? An error variation, Vladdy Jr. What's the error? Toronto Blue Jays. That goes to Rob. Very cool. Very cool. All right. I don't even know. How I, I guess I caught that one because it was upside down, but it wasn't flipped the other way. All right. That does it for that one. Three boxes to go. Three boxes left. <coughs> you can eat McDonald's, but no party. Yeah, the parties were legendary back then. Even Burger King had, like, playgrounds back then. They were trying to compete. Big boom on the Vladdy era card? I thought so. I thought so. Yeah, Burger King had playgrounds. They were trying to compete with uh, McDonald's back then. How about a Terry Humphrey? Expos Nationals going on here. Nice 1973, so Nationals going to Earl. Guys, two remaining in the next one. Are we going to do it? I feel like we are. It would be much easier on me and Jay if uh, <laughs> Burger King is and was trash. I concur. Burger King had its moments in the 80s where I believe, it, honestly, its food was better than McDonald's. And then uh, it just kind of went under the bus a little bit. Like it did not maintain quality. The bowling alley and the roller rinks. Also, I remember having a uh, birthday party as a wee lad in the roller rink. NBC Lanes. <laughs> Jay probably remembers NBC Lanes. <laughs> Here's a good story for you. So last year we picked up our first dog. It was in Utah. So we had to drive seven hours one way and seven hours back and it was in the middle of like winter so we drove there we ended up actually getting a hotel and staying over uh until the next morning and then picking up the dog and driving home because it was just too much like that 14 hours was too much so it's this little dinky town in utah called duchene and uh there's nothing there there's like nothing to eat so we stayed at like whatever just uh i don't even know what it was just a chain hotel in front of it was a gas station, which had a Burger King inside of it. And that was the only food we had access to for, like, two days. And uh, I really, like, my body felt violated. Felt violated from having to eat, basically, a, a diet of Burger King for two days straight. Yeah, man. It wasn't great. Buck 99, Whopper Wednesday. Remember, they would always have coupons for their sandwich. French toast sticks. Trying to push those Burger King breakfasts. All right, let's go on the left stack again. We still have two boxes to look at after this. We're at one hour, 10 minutes so far.
Nothing yet. I see a black facing card coming up though. Oh, the original chicken sandwich is the only thing I really truly like from uh, Burger King as well, Joe. And it's like so processed. It's like processed, pressed, like chicken slime into <laughs> into the form of a patty. Like it's not even. I don't even know what it is, but whatever it is, it's delicious. All right, here here comes something. What do we got? How about a Yelich color variation? Very nice, Christian Yelich color. Nice one, Milwaukee. Milwaukee goes to Christopher J. Christopher J. Yeah, the original chicken sandwich is the stuff. I like an American style with cheese and tomato. Remember when they used to do the, uh, they had three different styles. They had American style, which was just basically the original chicken sandwich with cheese and tomato. Then they had French style, which had like ham and Swiss, like a cordon bleu. And then they had uh, Italian style with mozzarella and like red sauce, like slathered up on it. They still bring those back, I think, as like a, a seasonal thing, like once a year. I don't know if they bring the French back. I know they bring the Italian back once in a while. I do like the American style, though. You can still get it. You just ask for it with cheese and tomato, and they'll just make it that way. Because that's not anything they don't have on hand all the time. Yeah, it seems like it could be chicken. It might not be chicken, but it could be chicken. There's the Jaron Duran. <coughs> Have it your way. That is their that is their shtick, right? All right, guys, we're do more autos. Are we going to see ink? We are do we've only pulled one auto so far. And ooh, there we go. How about Pete Alonzo? New York Mets, Pete Alonzo auto going off to Armando. One in nine thousand five hundred packs, the error card. Well, gosh darn. We pulled uh we pulled a banger on that one then. Pete Alonzo auto. New York Mets Armando. Congrats, congrats, sir. Nice. Freddie Peralta. <clears throat> Damn. One in 33 cases. I am like shocked that I actually caught that. It was just the fact that it was upside down and made me flip it. How about Matt Manning with the chrome white border for the Tigers numbering to 9.99. There we go. Wander New Age Performers. And just a tad bit left here from this one. We got uh, two full boxes after this. All right, that does it for that one <coughs> one sec here guys I'm trying to make the most of my base buckets I am really running short on space here good problem to have we went to Burger King one time last year there are several Burger Kings nearby, of course. There's, you know, the closest one we go to it the one day we're sitting in line. And I want an original chicken sandwich. What do we got? We've got a pinup of Willie Mays buried under there. Willie Mays, New York. And I asked the guy, yeah, you know, chick original chicken sandwich, blah, blah, blah. He's like, uh, sir, we have no chicken. I'm like, oh, okay. Then I ask him for, like, the fish filet. He's like, sorry, we don't have that either. And he proceeds to tell us they basically had no, like, none of their fried stuff was available. So, what do you have? Basically, everything is, so yeah, no chicken to be had in uh, Burger King, all of Las Vegas. Supply chain issues, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure we ate healthier than we would have otherwise that night. 
Sorry, grill isn't working. Yeah, sorry, grill is not working. This talk of original chicken sandwich, ain't gonna need one. Yeah, put it in the 10 microwaves. Guys, we're sold out on Heritage. I see red. Number seven, 30 minutes before they closed and they wouldn't sell a burger because they'd already cleaned the grill. That is not shocking, Greg. That is not shocking. 30 minutes before the restaurant closes, like they just went out of there. They don't give a shit about the bottom line of the restaurant. <coughs> so stupid. Like, what kind of manager was overseeing the line that night, right? One that does not give a shit about the restaurant's income. Alrighty. Are we going to see one more auto? We have two boxes to make it happen. We're at one hour, 17 minutes so far. Like I said, I'll need about 10 minutes in between these breaks just to catch my breath, get a drink. That good stuff. Pop some Excedrin. Yes, I'm old. <clears throat> Nothing yet. Two autos, Joe's calling on for an auto in each box. Joe, let's make that happen, bud. Come on, autos. All right, last little bit from the right side. All right, nothing in that side. So our hope lives in that stack right there. Here it comes. Luis. Trying to cheat, fellas. I was trying to see from the side profile. <clears throat> Kyle Farmer. <laughs> well, dreams crushed for two autos. I'm hoping we could still get one. How about a Brandon Crawford Clubhouse Collection Relic for the Giants? That's going off to Sean K. Sean, Brandon Crawford coming your way, buddy. Clubhouse Collection. So, our best chance is one more auto. I know, it was a good dream while it lasted. All right, here it is, last of it, and then one more box.
All right, that does it. Final box. <clears throat> Coming up. There we go. How about another Bryce pinup? Philadelphia doing great. Brandon, one more on the pinups. Bryce Harper. <coughs> the white Rastafarian. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, the dual and triple relics. I don't know, you guys, what, uh, I'm assuming rather rare. I haven't seen any yet across all our cases. Second stack. <laughs> yes, a licky boom boom now. <coughs> or if that guy's still alive. Right, guys here we go good luck let's find that last auto we've only pulled two usually three is kind of the number but not a guarantee so I'm hoping that we do get a third one I see black I see backwards card how about a Mike Trout image variation very nice angels going to Henry that's pretty good Good stuff. Mike Trout image variation to start us off. Congrats to you, Henry. Henry's seeing it go down. There you go. Congrats, Henry. Nice hit. You are welcome, my friend. My pleasure to uh, pull that. How about a Wander rookie? Guys, thanks for hanging out during these uh, breaks, too. These are long breaks, and we've had a nice crowd during each one of them. So that's what it's all about. We're trying to build up these crowds to uh, kind of be sustainable the entire time. A lot of times we go live. If there's nothing that's like a super high level of interest, we get a handful of guys in. But uh, ideally, the bigger the crowd, the better the chances are that things get filled up that night. So show on up, even if there's not something that uh, you're super interested in. Hang out with the crew. Maybe uh, a spot will kind of show itself that you might be interested in. We go live at least two to three times a week. We've been live a lot more recently to try to keep pushing this stuff. Our usual live days are Monday, Wednesday, sometimes Friday, based on release cycles. But uh, we've been live, like I said, a lot more to keep uh, moving on all these releases that have come out. <coughs> Feast or famine on the releases, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing for weeks, and then uh, boom. You know, pushing it all out in the market at the same time. Mike, what's happening, sir? Mike T hanging out. All right, guys, is it going to be ink? And if so, is it going to be something booming?
Guys, you see what I see? That's a super fractor, isn't it? That's a super fractor. I don't know what it is, guys. Let's do this. Let's leave it there. Okay? Let's look at the rest of the stack, and then we're going to look at it at the end. I caught a glimpse of the first lettering. I don't know what it is. Here's our official hit for the, for the box. And it is an Araldus Chapman for the Yankees Clubhouse Collection. New York Yankees going to Dave S. I'm excited to see what this Super Fractor is going to be. Clubhouse Collection Relic. So we did not get that third uh, bit of ink, but hey, I think they made up for it with the Super Fractor. Chapman, New York Yankees, congrats to you, Dave. Congrats, Dave. Hold on one sec. <laughs> Probably Jay, right? All right. We're going to see that super in a minute. There's a Jaron Duran rookie. Duval and Kalenic. All right, guys, what's the Super Fractor going to be? One sec. Just offloading these cards to the side. And here we go. All right. It is Mookie Betts. Holy shit. Mookie Betts, Dodgers, which was that double-sold team, which is absolutely crazy. Allen is the recipient on it. Mookie Betts, Super Fractor. There it is. One of one goes to figure, right? One of one Mookie Betts Super Fractor. Crazy stuff. We haven't seen a Super Fractor in a minute. It has been a while. So, Alan, congratulations there, sir. I'm going to sleeve him up for you at this very moment. Greg, you called out one of one in the very beginning of the break, didn't you? You said one of one in this case. And there it is. There it is. We have that card base and a Matt Beatty base for the Dodgers in addition that we're surrounding that Mookie. So, guys, that's going to do it. What a case. What a case. We have one more coming up next. Thanks again for uh, getting this one filled up, guys. It'll ship out in the next shipping batch out of Vegas.